Welcome! In this video I'm going to show you how you can make a camera controller for your 2D games. I will show you how you can move the camera around by dragging with your mouse or your finger if you're on mobile, how to zoom in and out and how to limit the camera, in this case to a sprite or any kind of position so it doesn't overshoot the actual game world. Ok, let's get started! So here I started with a new Unity project, I chose the 2D template and now I bring in a sprite that would serve as the map. I adjust the size a bit since I want it to be bigger than the camera and then I make a new script called camera movement and open it up. Ok, so since we're working with the camera, first of all we need a reference to the camera. So for that just make a field and serialize it so we can set it in the inspector. You could also use camera.main if you want to access the camera, but that is pretty bad practice because it searches for the camera every time you call it, so don't do that. Also if you have two cameras you don't know which camera you're gonna get. But if you just make a field you can assign exactly the camera you want. And then let's go over to the functionality to move the camera around with the mouse. When the mouse button is first click, we save the position in word space. Then for every frame it is still down, we calculate the distance of the origin and where the mouse is now. And then we move the camera by that difference. If this is still a bit unclear, don't worry, I will add some print statements to make it easier to grasp. So let's first make a vector 3 outside of the function and we set it every time the mouse button is down which is the frame in which it is clicked for the first time. Now that way we keep, we keep track of where the drag started. And for that we simply convert the mouse position, which is relative to the camera, to a word position. And now for every frame that it is held down, we check the mouse position and compare it to the origin. And then we simply take the camera position and add the difference that the mouse has moved. Once the camera has been moved, the first line here where we, where we calculate the difference will change because the mouse position to the screen is relative to the camera. So if you were to move the mouse and then stop, it will actually be the same as the origin, so we don't move anymore. And as I said before, if that is confusing, let's just add some print statements so you can see it in action. Back in the editor, let's add the script to the camera, assign the reference and try it out. As you can see, the mouse in world position is 0 0.8 and 0 0.4, which is now stored as the origin variable. When I move the mouse, that changes and the different becomes non-zero, but only for a single frame. Actually, if you look at the bottom left corner, you can see it more clearly because that just prints out the latest, so it's basically like a, an update ticker. And so that only is true for when the camera is moving. So when it moves, then the position gets reset and the difference is zero. And when you look at the actual map, the sprite, which is a game object that is not moving, the mouse stays at the same spot all the time, it's always right there in that center. And on a side note, if you want to prevent the panning around to stop where the mouse is over a new eye element, I recently made a video about controlling the mouse within a single script, including the mouse over UI check. So you could check that out and then use like a bool to see if the mouse is over UI element and at the start of the function you would just return. And on a different side note, I've used the normal update function here, but if you want the camera position to be based on a moving game object, like following a character, you should use late update instead. 
Late update is called after all the update functions of all scripts have been called. And that is quite useful when using the camera, because otherwise what could happen is this. Within calculating a single frame, the camera position gets set first, based on some object's position, but then this object gets moved by an update function in some other script, and now everything's messed up. But that just as a side note, in my case it doesn't matter because I set the camera based on input, and that will always be calculated first anyway. Okay, moving on to the zoom. This one is really simple, because all we have to do is change the size of the camera. We're going to need three float variables here that can be set in the inspector, so make sure to serialize them. One for how much we want to zoom each step, called zoom step, and then you probably want a minimum at maximum size for the camera. To zoom in, we decrease the size of the camera, and I'm mixing that up here in the code, but we'll correct it very soon. And to zoom out, we increase it. I'm using an autographic camera, meaning no perspective, so I change the autographic size. To make sure the value is within the minimum and maximum, I use the clamp method. You just put in the value that's supposed to be clamped, and then the minimum and the maximum that this value can be. And you can of course do that in one line, I just wrote it here in uh, multiple ones, just for clarity. And by making this function public, they can easily be called with a button click, so let's do that. Back in the editor, just create a button which will create a canvas for us, assuming you don't have one already. And I really prefer to set the canvas to screen space camera, so I do that, and for that I need to assign the camera. So now the UI is the size of the camera, and I think that's easier to work with. And then I also need to set the order in layer above, since everything is on one layer now, but anyhow, that just as a side. So take the button, duplicate it, name it, and maybe change the text. Then with both selected, I add an event and drag in the camera because it has the camera movement script. And then with only one selected each time, I assign the right functions. And then I kind of forgot to set the values for the zoom functions, and so I'm just working with way too many zeros here. So I do that and set the zoom step to 1, and the minimum to 1, and maximum to 1. And now everything is working quite nicely. Okay, now the last part, let's limit the camera by something. And I will use a sprite as an example, because that is what I'm using as a map. To make things clear, here is a quick overview of how things work. So this little orangey rectangular is going to represent our camera, and then of course the background, that's our sprite. When we get the camera.transform.position, it always refers to the center of the camera. Camera.autographic size is the height of the camera, but only from the center until the top or bottom, so it's basically half the height, like the green arrow here. If you want to get the width of the camera, you simply multiply the height with the aspect ratio, which is variable you can just get like camera.aspect ratio. And now for the sprite, once again, transform.position refers to the center, assuming you are using the default and haven't changed that in the sprite settings. To get the width and height, we can call the renderer.bounce.size, which is a vector 3, where the x value refers to the total width and the y value to the total height. And those are the things we need. Knowing that the camera position is always at the center, so if we want the maximum y position that it can go up, we need to get the y value of one of the top corners of the sprite and then subtract the height of the camera, meaning the camera.autographic size. And now we know, okay, this is the maximum y it can go. 
To get the minimum Y position, we get the bottom corner of the sprite and at the height. For the min and max X position, it's the same game using the width. Okay, now back to the script. First, we need the four outer corners of the sprite in world space. And since this sprite doesn't move, I will save them in private variables and set them in a wake. And then we need another field to assign the sprite renderer of the map, because from there we get the renderer.bounce.size I mentioned before. Assuming the anchor of the sprite is at, at the center, we need to add or subtract the height and width from the position to get the outer edge. As I just showed you, getting the height means we are going all the way from top to bottom, but we only want to go from the center to the top or bottom, so we divide everything by 2. Since the size of the camera changes every time we zoom, we will calculate the final positions where the camera can move from scratch every time. So make a new method called clamp camera, which takes a vector 3 and returns 1. This one takes a target position as a parameter and the one it returns is the one taking the limitations into account. So first let's get the height and width of the camera and store them in fields. And the rest is, as I mentioned, adding or subtracting the camera size from the outer corners of these sprites. And then we take the target position x and y and clamp them with our new min and max values before creating a new vector 3 that will be returned. Now of course you could write the entire function in a single line and not use any local variables, but to make things more clearly I did it this way. And then this method should be called every time we want to move the camera and every time after a zoom has occurred. And now with everything done, let's do a final test and hopefully it is working quite nicely for you as well. When you pan around, the camera is now limited to the sprite and when zooming out while the camera is at a corner, it gets moved nicely in position. Alright, there is just one tiny problem. When I zoom out so that my camera is bigger than the map, it leads to a rather unlogical clamp method the minimum x might be bigger than the maximum x. The good news is that this doesn't cause an error, it will simply clamp to the max value. The bad news is that you still have to make sure to not go bigger than the map. You could just do that in the inspector by trying it out and just messing around with some values, but it will be much nicer to do that in code, so it adjusts to any sprite automatically. I'm actually gonna leave that as a little challenge, so feel free to post your solution in the comments and I will take a look at it. And this is it for this tutorial, I hope you've learned something and enjoyed the video. If you want to see more stuff and support me, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you and goodbye.